I got eight questions here. Roll the die three times. And whatever questions I roll, that's what you're getting to start. This one is called Scary Stuff. I know that you love horror in general, but what is the scariest movie you've ever seen? Like so scary that you don't ever want to watch it again. I think one that I watched and I was like, I don't have any interest in watching that again. No offense to anyone who made it. It was great. But the movie Raw, which is like a French, um, f like feminist horror movie. It was so good, but it was so gross that I like thought about it so much after and was like, I think that that was a, a one and done for me. We got another one here. Role swap. If you could swap roles with anybody in the Fear Street trilogy, who would you choose and why? Josh, because I took a quiz the other day. We got like a which character are you quiz, which was very big for all of us. We were like, oh, we've made it. Like we've solidified ourselves in pop culture enough that we have a quiz. Um, but I got Josh and I was like that. Yeah, I love a conspiracy theory. I love telling people about conspiracy theories. And so I do feel very kindred to Josh as a character. You got one more here. All right. This is so fun. Fear Street one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure you've been asked this before, but I can't stop talking about it. My okay. answer changes it. If you could pick one Fear Street killer to go one-on-one -on -one against, who would you pick and why? Ooh, okay, this is good though, because I've been asked like which one is my favorite, but not which one I think I could like survive against. Maybe Billy Barker, because you just take his baseball bat away and then he's just a little boy. I babysat for a long time, so I'm like, I think I could figure this out. I have been picking the pastor simply because mm. we don't see, we don't see how he runs or how he, you know, takes on his victims. So I true. feel like it's a false sense of hope that I could survive an attack. Also, yeah. he's blind. But now yeah. I've changed my answer. My okay. answer is now the Humpty Dumpty killer, simply mm. because I want to see the Humpty Dumpty killer, even though Lee explained to me what that was, and it yeah. sounds awful. That was the one I remember seeing the movie cut together for the first time, and it does the clips. And I was like, no Humpty Dumpty killer? Has she explained to you what the Humpty Dumpty Killer does? You know, I don't think she has. Does he push people off walls? Oh my God, I'm so happy you said that. So I'm like, I, right? During, during like my press day interview with her, I went into uh -huh. like a laughing fit because that that is literally what I thought it was. Yeah. She, she told me it's someone who kills their victims and then stitches them together like Leatherface style, like Humpty Dumpty putting the pieces back together. And I'm just sitting there picturing a killer <laughs> pushing people off ledges. Yeah, I was like, just don't sit on walls. You know what I mean? But yeah, <laughs> if it's like a Silence of the Lambs Leatherface deal with skin. I don't want to meet that person. I'm going to give you an opportunity to remake the horror movie of your choice. First question is obviously you get the opportunity to remake, reboot, continue the, the series in the horror movie franchise of your choice. What movie do you pick? Maybe Nightmare on Elm Street. That's one that I really love. I'm a big, big Wes Craven fan. And I, yeah, I'm like, if they're doing Scream, I think they're gonna do it really well. I would love to see a Nightmare on Elm Street um, something. If you could pick a role to play, what character would it, would it be? I would love to play like a dream warrior because I love the third movie and I love like the group dynamic and the, the teamwork element of it, which I thought was like, in Fear Street, I was like, it's almost like we're dream warriors because there's a group of us. But that, I I would love to pop in and, and be a, a, a dream warrior of some kind. You get to take three Fear Street co-stars with you <gasps> to your new Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Who are you taking and who are they playing? I'll put Fred in there. Maybe I'll put McCabe in there for strength because he's the only one of us that could probably ever physically fight something. And he's, he's great at rallying a team together in real life. I would love to put Ashley Zuckerman in it because Ash in real life is so evil in the movies and so wonderful of a human being in real life. And I would love to give him a chance to show off that side of himself because he's truly one of our, he was like our, all of our big brother on the movie. And we're like, it's so crazy that you're so evil in the movies. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Collider Ladies Night. You have demanded it. And I am delivering right now because Olivia Scott Welch was kind enough to join me for a Collider Ladies Night, even though I have covered Fear Street to death. I'm so 
excited. I just can't stop covering your movies. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So you decide you want to be an actor. Yes. It's one thing to decide that and try to take steps forward in that mm -hmm. direction. It's like, it's like another level of the process to hit a point where you feel like, like you have your feet on solid ground. Like there's something attainable. It's the real deal. So do you remember whether it was a person you met or a gig you booked that made you feel like, like I am here and I can do it? So I started going to acting class um, when I was 11. And I knew, like, I really, really loved it. And I knew that I wanted to make movies, but I was really, really shy. I was like, not even shy. I was just like a really introverted kid. And just kind of like very, kind of like a low, like I wasn't like vulnerable with the public in any way. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't loud and like making jokes and stuff. So I think like when I started doing acting class, I was like, man, I'm going to have to really get through this that, to the other side. So I wasn't sure at the beginning if I could do it. And then I did a workshop one time with like one of the, one of the heads of DreamWorks. And this was when I was like 17, maybe, but she was like, I think you could win an Oscar someday. And I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, I felt like my scene was really good and stuff. And it was very kind that she said that to like a 17 year old kid. But um, yeah, I think that was like really nice. And then I started to like, just book little small projects here and there. And I booked a, a like a recurring, like a really small recurring role on Modern Family. And that was like one of the shows, it came out like the year that I started acting. And so I watched it every week to like try to get better at comedy. And then I like worked on that show and was like, wow, like this is so cool. Like this is a show that I had watched for so many years to like try to get better at acting. And now like I'm getting to act on it. And, and that was a really cool moment that felt very like full circle in a way. When you're first starting out, mm -hmm. you book a really cool Nickelodeon pilot, you get into yeah. it and then it doesn't go forward. How do you make sure to, to keep your spirits up and keep your focus on forging forward rather than getting you yeah. know, bummed out? When I got the call that I didn't get picked up, I was like, I think that that's okay. Like, I feel like I'm still really young. And if this were to have come so easy, that could maybe hinder me in the future. It was so fun doing it. And it's something that I like think about all the time because we filmed at like Paramount and like getting as like, like a, like a kid in high school to get to go every day to Paramount and like walk around and like, you know, like just get to like the way that Paramount smells is very specific. I don't even know how to describe it. It's maybe just me, but I'm like, it smells like it's haunted, but in the best way possible. Just seeing like sets get built and stuff was so cool. And it was just such like a bottle experience of like working on a stage that's like so famous and seeing them like build sets and getting to do like the rehearsals and then getting to the filming days. Like it was kind of a, a great first experience because everything was condensed down to like one month and I got to see everything like start to finish. When I found out that it didn't get picked up, I was like, weirdly, I was like, okay, like I think that'll be fine because I gained so much from it as is and by that time too like I was like 18 and it was a thing too where I was like I, my contract would have ended like now you know what I mean so in a way I remember being like okay would I want to be doing that until into my like mid-20s I don't know so I was like I think that this will be fine and then quickly after that I did like Agent Carter and Modern Family so I was like I feel like it's I'm I'm doing okay like I'm on some side of some kind of right path with all this Correct me if I'm wrong on this detail, but I believe you filmed Fear Street before Panic. So what is something you were able to achieve on Panic that you might not have been able to if not for your Fear Street experience? It was a thing where like Fear Street was long because we filmed them all at one time. And so it definitely was like a, a lesson in like pacing myself and just like, like self-preservation as like a person and an actor so that you could be like healthy enough to go and to like perform for so many hours of the day and like every day of the week and like Fear Street was so crazy because we filmed more or less like only at nighttime and so for like months we just all were like nocturnal I, it was it was easier too because it was all of us all the time like rarely were one of us like singled off to do work alone or even in like a pairing because like there were days where Ke Kiana had a little bit more by herself and then like there were times where it would be just Kiana and I or like just Kiana and Benji and I but with Panic, it filmed for even longer and there was so much that I did by myself. And so I feel like it was, I was, I feel very lucky that Fear Street went first because I, I learned all those lessons and like what mistakes I made and like taking care of myself that I like didn't necessarily make on Panic to where I was able to like sustain my energy for a lot longer. 
Because I think if I hadn't done Fear Street first on Panic, I would have been like a mess. Because I would just worked so much. And I would work like Saturdays sometimes too. And it was just, it was a crazy schedule. And I'm like, there were times where I was like, oh, but it's good. Because I realized that I have to like eat a lot of spinach to be able to like, you know what I mean? Like very, the things that people tell you of like, you need to exercise and stuff. I was like, sure whatever. I'm on my feet all day. But I was like, no, you do for real because you have to like move your blood around and stuff and work. It really does make all the difference. It I makes that so much of a difference. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because on Fear Street, I feel like there were so many days where I was like, I feel awful. And I was like, well, I've just been watching like the se- the first season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians out of boredom. So maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should just like turn off HBO. You know what I mean? Like I saw arachnophobia on HBO like four times filming Fear Street. And I was like, I could have been walking. So I usually don't like repeating questions, but I did want to give you one that I gave to Kiana. Oh, so yeah. So your side of this. So I know that there was some mixing and matching during mm-hmm. the final chemistry reads for those two roles. So mm-hmm. what is it about, you know, the first moment when you read with Kiana that made yeah. you say like, th- like this feels different. Some Something special is happening here and this mm-hmm. feels right we hadn't even known each other. Like there was really no way to predict that our screen test would go well because like we met for 10 minutes before we went in, like in a room with a bunch of other people. But it was just a thing where I feel like we started acting together and it was just kind of like our acting synced up. You know what I mean? Like it was very emotional to do the scenes with her and um, it just like worked well. Like we were able to really, like our timing was working out to where I I think we did the scene um, under the bleachers from 94. And that's like a real back and forth scene. And it like was real back and forth, like the first time we did it. And I think it was just, I think that's the fun thing about chemistry reads. And I'm excited to do them if I do like get into directing and stuff like that. I think it's cool to like just kismetly throw two actors together and it just like work for some reason. I kind of black out when I do screen tests because I get so nervous. So I'm like, but I do remember like it was a thing with her to where it was like she made a lot of eye contact with me. And I think that that's something that doesn't happen a lot in this in the chemistry that I've done. It can be like awkward almost to do a like no matter what the relate with so like romantic or even being friends. Like it's weird to look at someone you don't know and be like, we're best friends, remember? And I remember like we were able to hold a lot of eye contact during our scenes, which I was like, this is really cool. And she was, she's such a confident, confident actress. And it's kind of the same where it was like Dina, when she got to set and was playing Dina, like it wasn't too different from the screen test. Like she already had her so well-rounded. You are very talented all on your own, but having worked with Lee on Fear Street and also the Panic pilot, is there any kind of tool in your acting toolkit, so to speak? that you didn't have access to until you worked with Lee as an actor's director? Oh, this is a great question. Yeah, I feel like, and I think it's just a thing too, where like me as a person and then in turn an actor just goes really well with like who she is as a person and in turn a director. Cause it's like, she's very direct about what she wants and she makes it really easy to be like, she gives you like a very direct note. And if you don't understand it, she's like very willing to discuss it with you. And I think that that gave me, um, and she, she's good about like checking in on if things make sense and stuff. And so I think it was a thing where before like a director would tell me something and I'd be like, got it, you know what I, and I didn't really like, I would just try to, to be like, as respect to the director, like I won't, I'll just try to figure this out in my brain. But she really like made the space for everybody to be like, what do you mean? Like, I don't necessarily agree, but like, let's discuss this in like a very quick and respectful way that was very like efficient, which is something that I like appreciate working because I don't like, I like, like the pace of things going quickly. And she's really good at like telling you exactly what she needs and like discussing it with you in like a very like efficient and effective way. So I feel like that made me better about like on panic and stuff, um, like having the space to be like, I don't quite understand what you mean. You know what I mean? Like, can we talk about this super quick? Because I just need it a little, I just need a little bit more of an explainer and I know I can figure it out. But she's great. She like really taught all of us that that was like something that was okay to do and how to do it in a way that like wasn't so time consuming and like more constructive than it was like destructive to the project. That's a great answer to that question. It just feels like something that's super important to the process that I don't often hear about. I appreciate that. 
Thank you so much for hanging out with us on Collider Ladies Thank you. Night. This was so I've fun. I've said this a lot already, but congratulations. And thank you for Fear Street. It is such a bright thank spot you. for me in 2021. And I know thank the you. same is true for many out there. So yeah, big thanks too. to you and the team for making these excellent movies. And I thank can't you. wait to catch up with uh, with you for future things. Yes, me too. This was that, so I fun. got some very high hopes. Oh, thank you so much.